We are scripturalist. Now, what does that mean? A scripturalist is one that bases all of what they believe and practice on the scriptures of God. Was Jesus a scripturalist? Absolutely. Let's find out an example. Matthew 22, he was confronted by those Sadducees. And we're going to go to verse 23. On the same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him. Master, Moses said if anyone dies without having children, his brother shall marry his wife and shall rise up seed to his brother. Or raise up seed. Now, there were with us seven brothers, and the first one, being married, died with no seed, and he left his wife to his brother. And likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, I can see him like hit his fellow Sadducee friend, and how we got him on this one. Whose wife or the seven shall be, for all had her. Then Jesus answered and said to them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Now take note on that. He didn't just leave it with the scriptures. He said, nor the power of God. They're not tapping into that. Do we? Do we know the scriptures? Do we know the power of God? Verse 30, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are as the angels of God in heaven. So angels don't marry. We are going to marry Christ and it's going to be one time and it's the first fruits that marry Christ. And that's it. We go to verse 31. Now concerning the resurrection, Sadducees, of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now, 33, it says, And when the multitude heard this, they were amazed at his teaching. He spoke the words of the Bible. He is the word, the logos. And that's what Jesus did. He did this in the desert when he was confronted with Satan the devil. He says, it is written. Shum. It is written. Shum. That's what he did. And that's what a scripturalist does. The question is, do we? Now, the title of this is, We Are Scripturalist. If we want to be Christians and follow the ways of the Bible and walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, who walked up that narrow path to the promised land, now we will follow. But if we want to do that, we got to be scripturalist. So they were all amazed with the power of God. Now, why? Go to Hebrews 4 for the answer. Hebrews 4. This message has actually changed my approach on how I conduct myself during fellowship time, how I conduct myself in the question and answer period when I raise my hand. Who do I represent? Do I represent my own philosophies? Or do I represent, as a scripturalist, the mind of God? It's a question we all have to ask ourselves. And in Hebrews 4 and verse 12, for the word of God, that's the Bible, is living, now note it, and powerful. Remember, he said to the Sadducees, you don't know the power of God. You ever make that connection? And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of both soul and spirit, and of both the joints and the marrow, so spiritually and physically, and is able to discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, Jesus could know that by just being God, the Emmanuel. We are able to know and discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
if we use the scriptures. The wisdom of the world does not pierce the soul and the spirit. Think about that. And it sounds so good, the logic of Adam, the logic of mankind, the logic of the Greeks, the logic of Tony Robbins, who does inspirational speeches in Las Vegas seminars where thousands come. And it sounds so great. And he says many good things. But does it say that the motivational speakers of the world will pierce the dividing asunder of both soul and spirit? Does it say that Winston Churchill's eloquent words will penetrate the marrow and the joints and is to, able to discern thoughts of the intents of the heart? How about us when we speak at church, when we raise our hand at question and answer period? Who do we represent when we fellowship after the Sabbath, on holy time, what comes out of our mouths? Is it, oh, let me tell you. Back in 1942 in the summer, my Uncle Buck, yeah, my Uncle Buck. And then talk about Uncle Buck and his philosophies on life. The world has many stories. Now, some say, huh, Jesus told stories, and he did it. But I have a question. When Jesus told those stories, were they canonized? Is he the Logos, the Word of God? When he spoke, this is the Word of God. This is the Word in the flesh. He was the Word and is the Word that became flesh. Are we? But my Uncle Buck has some great stories. They're, they're based on <laughs> biblical principles. Are you telling me, Randy, I can't tell any stories? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. If I go to a restaurant with you and I'm having a discussion and you want to talk about your Uncle Buck to illustrate a point, that's great, okay? And got some wisdom there and everything. That's, I'm not saying you can't do that. What I am saying, and I say it strongly, when we're at holy time and we're representing the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'm talking to all those that teach. They're on that pulpit. And they're preaching the words of God. Let's use the stories of the Bible. Let's use the ones, the sword that penetrates the spirit. It goes into the heart. Now, if you say those stories, they will go only so far. That's my point. So if you want to use those sort of stories, instead of saying, wait a second, the story of Esther is better than Uncle Buck. Now, Uncle Buck made a good point, but whoa, that Mordecai and Esther, when he said, let's go to Esther too, and then you quote it. Sorry if you went there, but we need to be scripturalist. Maybe because we don't study that much that we don't use the word of God so much. Could that be the answer? Hmm. Whatever you pour into your mind, that's what comes out of the trap. So all week, if you're pouring in your mind, Hillary Clinton verse, Donald Trump round eight, you know, and you're listening to all the commentaries on it, then that's pouring into your mind. And then on Sabbath services, are you a scripturalist? Nope. We must represent the words of God. Let's see what the Apostle Paul did in Acts 17. Let's go there. And what did Paul do when he went to church? Let's read verse 2. And as was the custom with Paul, he went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from what? From the scriptures. Here, they talked about scriptures. Do you do that at Sabbath services? Do you reason amongst each other? Do you talk about the great holy book? Or do you talk about Tom Sawyer? 
It's a question you have to ask yourself. Are you a scripturalist? Let's go down a little bit to verse 11. This is when he went to Berea. Now, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They didn't accept Jesus Christ over there. For they received the word with all readiness of mind. And what did they examine? They examined the scriptures, 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 scriptures daily, not weekly. Oh, where's my Bible? I got to go to services. Honey, have you seen my Bible? Where? Ah, I can't find my Bible. Oh, didn't I bring it last Sabbath? That is not good. That's not what a scripturalist does. We need to study daily. And it says here, the scriptures to see if those things were so that they were preaching. So whoever's up there on that pulpit, I don't care who it is, question them with this. Paul was up there and they questioned Paul. It doesn't say, then Paul said, don't you know who I am? I was in Arabia with three years with Jesus Christ manifested and he taught me personally. You question me? Did Paul say that? No way. How could Paul ever be angry when someone wants to use the scriptures? Now, Paul would be angry if they used the philosophies of men to argue. Something just sounds wrong here. Um, and they talked about the wisdom of the Greeks. Now we got a problem. Do you understand that? We need to use scriptures. Are you a scripturalist? Now the wisdom of the world, as I said before, does not penetrate the soul and the spirit. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2, because Timothy was a scripturalist. All those that Change from the corruptible to the incorruptible. All those first fruits that have thrones waiting for them, every single one of them, when they are on this physical planet Earth, they were scripturalist. They put aside the philosophies of men. They put aside all their traditions and studied the scriptures and lived by those words. They were laughed at. They were mocked at with the philosophies of men, even in their own congregations that they attended. Persecution mostly comes from within, just like the Sadducees were within. Understand that the only way to please God is to be a scripturalist and live by these words. So in 2 Timothy 2, in verse 14, see that they remain mindful of these things, earnestly charging them in the sight of the Lord not to argue over words that are not profitable in any way, but which lead to subverting of those who hear. You ever defend the world? It's about semantics. Now that word really means this, and then you're defending the world. Well, the world is full of envy, pride, jealousy. Should you defend the world? Or should you defend the words of God in a corrupt world? And if you get in these arguments with church members, that's what I'm talking about, without using scripture, well, let's see, it just doesn't seem right. My experience on it, if you go back, back in 1987, in the Worldwide Church of God, you notice that people that constantly talk about, <laughs> could grab this and go, ah, and push it, constantly talk about the past. The past, the past that is not canonized. This is what we should talk about. We should talk about the book of Amos. He was a shepherd. Do you know about Amos? How is it in your arsenal? 
What did Amos say? What about the kings and all those stories? Be a scripturalist. Not talk about how your mailman used to have these great philosophies with you, great conversations, and bring that on the holy time because mailman Bob said this awesome thing. This is awesome. We need to be scripturalists and we continue onward in Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Diligently study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly, that's a key word, rightly, because people twist this word, rightly dividing the word of the truth. Did you notice that? A scripturalist. Knowing how to pick and choose when there's something going on in the church, a subject at hand, fellowship. How do you use the word of God? Do you rightly divide it? That reminds me of Hebrews chapter 5 because they were having the milk of the word and they loved the milk. They needed the meat of the word. Now, does that apply to the conversation? Now, someone told me once that Randy... Messages are not just for the experienced. Sometimes the experienced need to step aside and it's for the new, the new people. So messages should reach them first. Where does it say that in the Bible? It says, preach meat of the word. The newbies will get the scraps. Remember the Canaanite woman? She supported that logic of the Bible. She said even the dogs eat the crumbs off the master's table. So a preacher of God that represents the kingdom and talks to the spiritual mature preaches meat. And then the newbies will get the remnants and then they'll grow to the meat. See, let's go onward to verse 16, but avoid profane and vain babblings because they will only give rise to more ungodliness. All the stories they people tell and their words will eat away at the body like gangrene green of whom Hymnius and Philetus who have gone astray from what? The truth. This is the truth, the scriptures claiming that the resurrection has already taken place and are destroying the faith of some. What is the faith? The kingdom, seeking, forgetting that. Their words cloud the vision. Once you have the vision completely clouded, you then live for the world. You back the world. You will stick up for the world. And that is not good. Now, the world doesn't know better. They're ignorant. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do, said by Jesus Christ and Stephen. You can read that in Acts 7. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. Are you a Christian? If you're a Christian, then you're an ambassador of what? The kingdom to come. So that's what we look forward to. And you will love to be around scripturalist. Yes, that's who you want to be around. People that are studying daily, that speak the words as it says in Philippians 3, let your conversation, your conduct, your citizenship beware. Let it exist in heaven, our mind where Jesus Christ is. So, it's up here, not down here. Scripturalist, up here. Okay? The philosophies of men down here. Now, where do you want to be? Who do you want to hang around with? See? So, if you want to know if someone's a scripturalist or not, just listen to them talk. 
Sabbath after Sabbath. Listen to them talk. If they're excited about the word of God and the connections of God and what they've been studying, bringing gold to Sabbath services, then they are scripturalist. But if they bring the philosophies of men, then they are not scripturalist. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, let's start in verse 4. And my message and my preaching was not in persuasive words of human wisdom. Wow. How many are on that pulpit teaching and talk about all their wisdom that they had throughout their life? Because they got to fill all this time for these long sermons and not the word of God. See, Paul knew this. He didn't try to persuade them with words of human wisdom. Rather, it was in demonstration of what the spirit, now notice the next word, and of power. That's the third time now. Jesus says you don't understand the power of God in the scriptures. Use the sword of the word of God. It is the power of God. Now, do you want to use the power God? The power punch? That's the kingdom punch. It's not physical, literally. It is spiritual. It puts heaves of coal on someone's head. It is the truth and it pierces asunder. Verse 5, so that your faith might not be in the wisdom of men, there it is again, but in the power of God. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might, not by power, and then it's, that's human power, it says in the Hebrew, but by my spirit. Now that is power. Verse 6, now we speak wisdom among who? The spiritually mature. That is the the ones that are called by the Father that are on fire for the faith. Many are called, I see many, but few are chosen. Now that's up to God, but guaranteed, he chooses the ones that are scripturalist, that get it, that follow his words, that speak the words of God. It says here, however, it is not the wisdom of this world, nor of the rulers of this world, who are coming to nothing. Uncle Buck's stories are coming to nothing. In a billion years from now, in the new heavens, in the new earth, will we have on plaques Uncle Buck's stories? Are they really going to matter? Verse 7, rather we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom that God foreordained before the ages unto our glory. All the Proverbs that Solomon tapped into, he didn't make them up, he tapped into the truth. They existed beforehand. We are tapping into truth. We're not the inventors, we're the discoverers. We are scripturalists. In verse 8, which not one of the rulers of this world has known. For if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But according as it is written, I love that, Paul's a scripturalist. The eye is not seen, nor the ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, every, every, Solution to every problem in life. Are you facing problems right now in your life? Guarantee it. Everyone is. You're not the only one. Everyone faces problems. That's why they got psychologists in the world. And there are millions of them. And the ones that are not psychologists have the answers as well. But really, do they? This has the answers. Fred Coulter once said that the book of Job alone has the answers of life. Now, if that's true, 
why don't we quote the book of Job more? Hmm. If the Bible does have all the answers, why aren't we scripturalists in quoting this? Instead of going first in our priority mind of our thoughts first. We need to quote scripture. We are scripturalists. We represent the God, his will. That's what we're doing. We're going to a kingdom and we have a great high calling, Paul said. See, that was a quote. Paul said, it's a high calling. So why not quote scriptures? And the more we study, the more it will just come out. The more you'll understand. So, who are you hanging around with? If you're hanging around non-scripturalist, then you're going to be pulled into the wisdom of the world. And you're going to love Adam and Eve. Now, when Adam and Eve took of that forbidden fruit, you shall surely die the day you take it. Right when they were taking it, they were a dead man and woman walking. Remember Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. We were once dead. Our words, our philosophies, dead. And we're called to be scripturalist. So now, it is a shining moment. We need to represent God as ambassadors, wear the armor of light, gather with those that are like-minded. That's what Paul said, like-minded. And seek the kingdom, why? So we can do the will of God and do the things that we are designed to do. And only then can we be eternally happy. So, fellow Christians, we are scriptural. For more messages from the Word of God, please subscribe to my channel.